Okay, so about, I don't know, probably two weeks ago now, I pulled my Instagram audience, I posted on my story, um, who is your least favorite skater and why? And I did not specify any rules to it. I didn't say whether you dislike them because of their skating or whether you dislike them because something they did off the skateboard. I left it at super uh, open-ended because I wanted to get every possible response. Um, and I do know for a fact that, uh, especially when it seems to be social media, people bond a lot more over hatred than things they have in common. It's like, it's like real easy for you to be like, yeah, fuck that guy. Uh, more so they, I, I feel like more conversations start off of that and people get more excited about talking about that, uh, than they do about like, Hey, like I love this guy, which, um, I don't know, maybe that's a, something to do with a human condition or something like that. I don't know. I don't feel like getting philosoph philosophical one, because I can't say it first try and two, because I'm not a philosophizer, sir. Uh, so we're just gonna review some of these said, uh, people that were said, and I'm just going to say them. I'm not going to say who said them because I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. And then i uh, do a little discussion about each of them. Um, I will note two people who get their names said the most. Um, but for the most part, I'm not going to try to like say, because a lot of people say the same person. I'm going to try not to like overlap too much, but there will be some uh, because people give different reasons for said skaters. So... Um, we are first off gonna take out anyone who says anything satirically. There's like a bunch that are like, um, Dale Decker because he's too buff or uh, Dan Corgan because he's too good at slappies. Uh, those are, though those are a couple um, fine strokes to the ego. There's no point in me presenting them to you because you came here to enjoy hatred, evidently. Uh, I'm assuming that's why you clicked on this or maybe to see if the skater that you hate is in this list. So no satirical ones, and that's pretty much going to be the only rule that I go off of. Uh, so first one we're going to do is uh, Rob Deirdrick for stunning on my boy P-Rod in the skate film. Okay, so that's actually kind of a joke because that's Street Dreams. I haven't seen it, but I do know that Rob Deirdrick's the protagonist in it. Um, but don't worry, Rob Deirdrick, he'll, he'll come up later. Um, let's see, Mark Suchu, pretentious slash pseudo-intellectual... NYC gentrifier. So I do know that Mark Suchu is from, I think, San Jose, and uh, he's, you know, a California uh, bred kid who just was really into East Coast skating. He ended up going to school at Temple University. You can definitely see, like, uh, the East Coast style or approach of skating influencing a lot of the way that he does his tricks. Um, but I don't know about that being fake at all. I think being inspired is, you know, what is that, the biggest form of flattery? Plus, like, that boy is insanely good. Now, as far as pretentious, pseudo-intellectual NYC gentrifier goes, I cannot necessarily... I've never met the dude, so I don't know if he's pretentious, but I do know that the way he seems to carry himself on social media, like Instagram and stuff like that, like where he's like tagging Tony Hawk and like sort of doing these mainstreamy kind of things, uh, it doesn't seem like he's trying to be a cool guy at all, nor does it seem like he's trying to be pretentious, but maybe you have an experience with him and maybe he's pretentious, I don't know. Uh, all I know is that boy is really good at skating. I like watching him skate. And I haven't heard anything negative about who he is as a person. Um, the NYC gentrifier, I don't know where he lived in NYC, so I can't really comment on that either. Um, but I mean, shit, man. It, it's hard to live just about anywhere um, that's affordable without gentrifying to some degree. I mean, even like the area of like Long Beach that I'm in, like all of the streets surrounding like going further into the city are super gentrified. And where I live now currently... Um, which is near the beach, used to be, uh, you know, more of a cheaper area to live that obviously gets gentrified because it's close to the beach. It's You'd be pretty hard-pressed to not find uh, yourself gentrifying something. Not saying that that makes it okay, but I don't know what they're referring to with him. I don't know where he lives. Uh, let's see, going to the next one. Uh, Aaron Cairo. Aaron Cairo is probably going to come up here a bunch of times. Um Let's see. If you don't know who Aaron Cairo is, he runs Braille. Uh, it's or he's the original owner of Braille. I don't know if he's still necessarily so hands on running it, but it's like uh, basically they teach you how to skateboard and they do a bunch of sort of like clickbaity um, skateboarding things that reaches outside of skateboarding because that's where all the actual views are. So they'll like skate skateboards made out of I don't know toxic masculinity or whatever. They'll skate a skateboard out of a boomerang or whatever they can get their hands on. And uh, they'll make a video out of it and then have some really extravagant thumbnail, which is uh, what I've been trying uh, recently with my thumbnails. I've been trying to make them a little more clickbaity, but that shit sucks. That does not work. It feels unauthentic. 
And um, the audience that I had gathered the first, you know, 100 videos that I've made were more interested in the actual skating, not the uh, wider thing. So me trying to reach outside of that audience uh, definitely didn't work too good. So we're going to be slowly uh, creeping back towards uh, the way I used to make my thumbnails. But anyhow, let's see, Nigel, because he's cocky, uh, I mean, he's one of the best skaters. So it'd be pretty surprising if he wasn't cocky. I'd argue that the top, like... 30 skaters always have a degree to, of some sort of cockiness to try to fight to be that good. Like, to put that much effort in to be that level of skating, I always say that, like, Forrest Edwards, for as cocky and as famous he is, as he is for being cocky and pretty politically incorrect, um, I imagine that a lot of skaters have that same mentality. They just keep their mouths shut about it. And I kind of uh, got to give kudos to Forrest for being so open about just being a shithead. Um, I have friends that are friends with him. They say he's funny and that a lot of it was satirical. I don't know, personally. I got a huge kick out of his um, slap uh, one in a million contest. Like, he was like such the anti-hero of it. Like, I watched that show just to see the shit that he was going to say. So, uh, all in all, uh, probably my favorite person who ended up was on, who was on that show, even though he was just caught. I mean, some of his quotes. I won't even repeat his quotes on here because uh, they're just so stupid. But, yeah, pretty funny. Uh, let's see, Bowberry Airy. Um, Bowberry Airy comes up a bunch. It says he stole Alice Cooper's image for an ad of his te terrible T-shirts. Love you though, um, Bowberry Airy. So I personally don't know Bowberry Airy. I have friends who know him. Dale knows him. He says he's a really nice guy. I've never met him, but he comes up in this list an insane amount. In fact, he comes up the second most. Nigel is number one. Bowberry Airy is just behind him by one. Uh, and it makes sense because he's like such a uh, jarring person to see. When people look at like skateboarding videos, I think a lot of people tend to, I don't know, think that it's like this like super like core niche thing that's like not mainstream. And here comes this person who has all these like outfits and expensive shoes. And it looks like his skateboarding is more based around the aesthetic of like fashion and stuff like that and less around skateboarding. But it's like, well, the kid can skateboard. He's good at skating. Like his tricks aren't, easy uh and then on top of that he gets like all that stuff for free like people send him that product and then he skates in it and then that like blows him up even more and so that's like he's getting paid with that stuff so uh if when i look at what he does and then when i look at what i used to do when i used to work construction doing road work i think to myself yeah if i could get those paychecks for dressing like that and skating like that in those shoes versus like digging a ditch somewhere, I, I'll take Bo Berry any, Airy any day. So the skateboarding community, maybe not be the biggest fan of him, but he does have a huge fan base. Um, maybe more in the fashion world, and there's definitely skaters that fuck with him. I mean, you know, he's debatably one of the people who helped push that, like, I'm not gonna say the trap edit, but like uh, that over-edited Instagram clip where it's like, yeah, it's an Instagram clip, but we're kind of going in. And uh, it's not my cup of tea. I'm not a fan of those edits, but like, I get it. And as far as this Alice Cooper thing, I don't know nothing about it. If he stole that, that sucks. I don't know. Uh, people steal shit from everyone all the time, though. So you'd be pretty hard-pressed to find any skateboarding company out right, right now who didn't bite something from the old World Industries handbook uh, when that first was coming out, or like the old New Deal handbook. Um, let's see. Here's a, another Nigel one. I'm going to skip over that. Jagger Eaton, because he has fake style. Uh, I mean, dude, I don't know what to tell you about this one. Like, I, I try not to, like, rip on anyone too, too hard, like, as an individual skater. But, like, the Jagger Eaton fake style thing is, like, he does cross arms, which is, like, a, kind of a Chaz Ortiz thing. And then he goes to careful hands, which is, like, that was, like, a hot thing in, like, 2018. Like, I, Evan Hernandez out of nowhere started doing careful hands. And Tristan Funkhauser, T-Funk, started doing it out of nowhere. And, like, they didn't do it before, but all of a sudden they were, like, doing it. And then Jagger also does, like, the pant pull-up thing, which is super Paul Rodriguez. Like, he's combining all these things that seem like they're coming from very obvious skaters and trends and smushing it into this, like, mess of uh, whatever it is. But it's, like, he's so good at skating uh i don't know like, I'm, I'm sure to the i wouldn't even want to see the untrained eye but like skaters who aren't aware of all those people who kind of set those trends uh probably looks like that's just how he skates but i don't know it's not hard to argue that it is sort of artificial but it's working for him i don't know uh, he's still better than probably whoever our favorite skaters are he's you know one of the best skaters out there he just yeah i i agree i don't like the uh fabricated movement of his body but at the same time, without saying too many names, or actually, you know, I'm not going to say any names, 
too many skaters fake their styles like an insane amount that's that knee fold thing that people do and stuff like that that's very intentional like where it's like you can tell they're trying to do that jamie thomas knee thing like i don't know i think it's super obvious fake style in general it isn't like the worst thing in the world. I used to be like, if you fake your style, you are the worst skater in the world. But it is like not my favorite thing. Uh, but it is a thing. I don't know. Um, maybe he's just a huge fan of all these skaters and he let them influence him to that degree. I have no idea. Uh, Dane Berman, because he blocked me because I said his cut looked infected. Dead ass whack. Um, yeah, I don't know anything about you saying that his cut looked infected. I imagine he got like a scrape or something like that. And he blocked you though? That is interesting that is a weird thing to block someone over um but you know what people block people all the time over really stupid shit so i don't know i i can't speak on that story i never really met the dude uh, i have been to the reality 50 50 in philly though and that shit is impossible um a lot of people also said that it's themselves their selves is their least favorite skater because they suck or because they're afraid of something or whatever you everyone should just be their own favorite skater like you should be at least trying to make yourself your favorite skater. If you're not your favorite skater, like strive to be uh, the kind of skater that you want to see. Because I think that's when you have the most fun. When I was growing up, I felt like I was trying to do the tricks that everyone else wanted to see. Like the handrails and the gaps and stuff like that. And though that stuff was fun to an extent because it is a part of skating. Um, it wasn't until I, like, I kind of let all that go and started doing tricks that I thought would look cool. Or tricks that I thought were silly and funny. Or tricks, like a lot of them, I was doing tricks just to make my friends laugh. Uh, and that's when I really started kind of becoming myself. And like even like my style started to reflect that, the way I look on a skateboard. Because before I was trying really hard to look a certain way. To where it wasn't necessarily I'm trying to emulate someone's style, but I was trying to look real solid on a skateboard. And if you see me skate, my arms are all over the place. I have no control over that. So once I embraced that, it looked a lot more natural. And um, in my opinion, uh, I used to not... I, I used to hate the way I look on a skateboard, and now I actually have no problem with the way I look on a skateboard. By no means do I think I have a good style or a decent style, but I prefer the way I look now tenfold over the way I used to look. I think when you sort of let your body settle into the way it's actually going to move when you skate, uh, it's the best version of you you possibly can be. And then as far as being more clean and less sketchy, that's not style, that's just control. The more con control you have, the better off it's going to be. Um, okay, this one's actually says me, uh, and it actually is a real thing. It says, Dan Corgan, he looks like he smells like a butthole. Um, I don't know about a butthole, but I definitely probably smell terrible. Because uh, I, I do, I shower every day. In fact, sometimes I shower twice a day. But, um, yeah, that's, you know, um, I, I, I skate all day, and I sweat a ton. My hands sweat 24-7. My feet sweat 24-7. I'm sure I don't smell that great. Um, here we go, Jagger Eaton fake style thing again. Uh, Nija, because he represents everything that skateboarding isn't. The skateboard industry represents everything that skateboarding isn't. Any, anything that, like, they're all trying to market to you and try to get you to buy their product via not how good the product is, but by how cool the product is or how it speaks to you personally. Like, when someone's trying to get to you via some sort of aesthetic, I don't think that's what skateboarding is. Skateboarding simply is this thing that you do that is super fun and how Whatever you ride that thing or whatever product it is, long as it enables you to like do those fun things, that's all that matters, man. And that was like a huge point, which was super misconstrued of that Karyuma video that I made where I was like, the point of the video wasn't to buy Karyuma. In fact, I specifically say in that video, don't just buy Karyuma. It's literally don't buy shit based on the way that it's marketed to you. Buy shit on the way that you actually think it would skate or how good the product is or if it morally lines up, like I don't think that's the worst thing to go off of either. Like if a company doesn't use child labor or if a company is very adamant about giving back to the skateboard industry or the, not the skateboard industry, but the skateboard uh, world, like real and anti-hero, everything out of deluxe is like the best example of that because the owner, Jim Thebo, goes out of his way so often to like do shit, do give backs, um, you know, embracing their skateboards and, and bringing that under uh, the deluxe umbrella. Um, pushing that company, which is like, you know, such a big thing, you know, the queer representation in skateboarding, like, he's all for that. And I remember when I was a kid hearing about real skateboards, I think it was through real, but obviously it's through deluxe. They went to a bunch of old, um, like when you get your board taken away by a cop, they like do like, uh, uh, what are they called? Um, not appraisals, but you know, when they um, bid on boards to get rid of them. Why can't I think of what that's called? Uh, but anyways, they try to like get rid of all the boards and they went and bought all the skateboards that were confiscated and they just went and gave them away. And how, like, how sick is that? First of all, that how clever is that? Second of all, how rad is that? 
if you support a skateboard company, I suggest supporting things like Deluxe. And Andy Schrock is another person who just does an insane amount for not just his team riders, not just for the people who he works who works for him. Because when Andy became successful, he took everyone with him. He took all of his friends. He took all of his team riders. They're all getting taken care of. He reaches out to skateboard communities and gives money to them without making a video about it or being like, hey, this is what I'm doing. I know several stories that are not my place to tell of him giving back an extreme amount to uh, people. So say what you want about how corny you think Revive is or how corny you think Three Block is or anything like that. Andy Schrock fucking rules and everyone that is under that umbrella, they are all good people. He's not putting on some uh, person who's a piece of shit or something like that. Like it, he actually takes uh, a lot of things into account when he builds what I consider his empire. Uh, and same thing goes for Jim Thebo. Um, definitely someone who holds people to uh, their... Uh, highest standard i think uh let's see jim greco his style pisses me the fuck off um one thing i will say about jim greco is his part in uh w what was that i want to say it was misled youth where he backside 360 is that 10 stair the brick 10 and lands with his feet like basically in hang 10 just in front of the back bolts is like my favorite right away from a skateboard trick Actually, it's a second favorite. My favorite is uh, Ethan Fowler, 360 flips a double set, and then just kind of throws his arms back, like, fuck that spot. Um, like, I'm over it. I like that a lot. But, um, yeah, Jim Greco, I can't speak much on what his style is now because I haven't really watched any of his vlogs because that's what the fuck they are that, that Thrasher puts out, where it's literally like a day in the life of Jim Greco, but it's like a whole edit, and it's somewhat youtube -y. And one of them, he actually does an unboxing. Like, it's like some shoes that he had made, but it's so funny because I'm like, this is just like a cool version of unboxing. He's just showing you what he got in the box and he's like ripping it apart. Got a big kick out of that because he's so far to the core side though. Everyone's just like, oh, it's Jim Greco. It's like a thing, but it's no, it's a 12 minute YouTube video. Uh, but it's, it's Jim Greco doing it and people really care about him. Uh, I don't really have uh, much to say about his style. I will say that in that video, he looks like he's not having fun skating at all. Uh, but you know, he's put for such a crazy career, I could definitely see how that'd be kind of jarring. And I think sometimes you have to step back from uh, that, you know, he not only backside flipped the fucking 15s there, you know, that was probably like a mental war, much less, you know, a physical one. Uh, so I could definitely see getting a little frustrated on that. But I remember watching those videos and not feeling like I wanted to skate. I remember watching those videos and feeling like, man, I am so grateful that I do not have the skill or mental ability to be at that level of gnarliness because that looks dreadful to me. But that's just me. Um, bunch of, well, another one about Nigel, about him being boring. I think a lot of, of the best skaters are really boring to skate. You know, there's always exceptions, like a shot of weird, obviously. I mean, watching that kid when he was a younging, uh, he's from the same area as I am. He's, well, he's from New Jersey, but Maryland, we'd run into each other at contests and skate parks and all that stuff. And even then, he just like had such a flowy control. It makes sense that he went on to be skater of the year. In fact, I remember when he first got hooked up by Real, being like, oh man, I feel like that's gonna go places. But it was like, it was kind of out of nowhere because I didn't hear from him for a while. So I was like, yeah, he's getting hooked up by Real. And I was like, oh, sick. And it was literally like a year and a half later that he was skater of the year. And I just remember being like, like, you can tell when someone has it, but when they like hit this weird, I don't know, it's like almost like they hit a switch where they're like, they're all in. Like that shit is just mind blowing to see. I watched Tom Asta do it too. I've seen a couple skaters do it. Miles Willard, oh, he's another skater, another buddy of mine that I'm watching go through that process now. It's just like, oh, this motherfucker's gonna do some shit. He had a cover of a Thrasher when he was still flow. I'm, I'm, I'm getting distracted. Anywho, um, Scapegoat, uh, bust into the scene to sell Karyuma and Bright and the nerve to call himself the GOAT. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Scapegoat's definitely kind of a polarizing one because uh, he was flow for Death Wish. And uh, I don't know, I never really expected to see anything huge come from him. He is like insanely talented in the sense that he doesn't really have a stance the way he skates goofy footed on transition and regular on street, even though I think it is very obvious what his stance is. Um, like, the fact that he is still that ambidextrous is insane. Like, his 360 flips, he's better at um, doing them goofy foot it than regular foot it. Uh, but it makes me think of that guy, Mariana, quote, where he says, um, if you can't do a trick regular, then is it really switch? Um, so it's, you know, uh, there's some debate there. I've never met the dude. I've heard a couple stories of him that aren't my place to tell. Um, so I'm not going to really speak on 
him, but I will say on his skating, uh, I do get a kick out of watching the lines where he's kind of switching stances the whole time. Like I hate Venice skate park footage with a passion, but that's kind of what I picture when I see him do that. And like when he does like some crazy bowl line and rolls out and does some switch shit, um, that's pretty entertaining. But as far as like his personality and, and all that stuff, I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to give an opinion on what I think of him when I don't have any information to go off of. I do have one, but I'm not going to tell you because uh, I don't really know him. Um, let's see. Broberry Airy is kind of cringe, not gonna lie. Fucking skateboarding is cringe. Like this, the skate, any sort of skateboarding imagery is pretty cringe. I'm cringe. I'm here talking to you about other people that are hated. That's cringe. Now, there's not a YouTuber out there or a skateboard company out there that is not pumping out cringe. It's just a matter of who eats up that cringe or not. Some cringe is just flavored different. Oh, that got cut off. It says, I'll read it again. The cater seems like he doesn't care anymore and his parts all have music completely opposite of, and then some misspelled thing. Um, yeah, Cater, I saw that stuff, the Woodward stuff, and that stuff seemed pretty whack. I don't think it's cool to, like, have someone invite you out and just shit on them, like, in the way where you're, like, ruining their place and stuff like that. Uh, though, then again, when I went to Braille and I did the anti-Braille video, um, some people were bummed on that. Like, some people that, like, worked there were, like, not stoked that I did that because it seemed very much like, hey, like, we had you out and you talk shit on our company. Even though I feel like I did a pretty good job showing that I was doing the exact opposite. It was a satire of... Uh, actually hating on the skate industry and what's cool and what's not cool. And then I even have an entire rant in the video about how uh, I think Braille is great for skating because it brings more people into skating and blah, blah, blah. And say what you want about the politics of all in all, I think that they, uh, as, as a whole, like help skateboarding for the most part. And a lot of those guys are really good guys. I mean, you know, Mowgli and um, Chris McNugget and uh, a lot of people that I met, you know, they're, they're, they're normal dudes who skateboard. Uh, and I, I think that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, some, I probably should have pushed my spiel on why it's cool closer to the beginning of the video because I think some people didn't finish the entire video and was just like, oh, Dan's an asshole. He's talking shit on Braille. It's like, no, I'm not. I have a lot of respect for those guys. Uh, let's see. Uh, anyone who skates naked. That's a lot of people. Um, Rob Deirdrick, angriest skater ever, only did it for the money and then sold his soul on MTV. So the angriest skater ever thing, I totally get. There's definitely a lot of footage of him freaking out and uh, being not the raddest dude. But the selling out, like... He was coming towards the end of his skateboarding career and the fact that he saw an out to take that Robin Big skit from the DC video and capitalize and make money on it. Oh my God. The th oh, who, there was not a skater alive who would have turned that down. And keep in mind, please, that before that happened, Jason Dill, the chorus of the core, right? Like the guy who owns uh, F.A. and like, you know, like part of the whole, like, you know, it's like F.A. and hockey and all that whole distribution. I don't know if it's like just his. I mean, obviously, a Ave is a part of it, too. But, you know, people like think he's like really, really cool or whatever. Uh, he was on uh, the Osbournes and he was displayed as a skater bum who just slept on the couch and didn't do anything. So he is collecting a check uh, to look like a skater bum, not really promoting skateboarding in any positive way at all. Uh, not saying that it matters whether he was promoting it in a positive way or not at all, but regardless, it's just like, well, you know, he's definitely not the first one to like sell out and make some money. Like people point at like Bam and they, you know, all these other skaters, Tony Hawk and stuff like that. But it's like motherfuckers, cool skaters have been doing that since day one. Like shut the fuck up. Uh, everyone's selling out and cashing in. Um, and I think that's, if you're getting paid, get fucking paid. Um... Let's see, Dale, just see, that's another one. She's like, he's just making a joke about Dale. Dustin Dolan, because he don't land shit. Uh, that's because he's always hurt. Uh, if you look at his Baker 3 part, Baker 2G part, uh, his uh, sight unseen part, he lands a lot of fucked up shit. And you can tell in those tricks that he is just going for stuff. Uh, going for some really, really intense, dangerous stuff. So it makes sense that as he's getting older, he's getting more heart hurt. And also, obviously, the alcohol and everything. Um, probably not treating his body the best, so he's kind of out on his ass a lot more often than not. Uh, but, I mean, to say that he doesn't land shit, not landing as much anymore, but I bet you if he got a clean, like, eight-month break of not being injured, which might not ever happen, but if he did, he would put out some pretty incredible stuff because that boy is fearless. He front-heeled the, the D6 block, which if you've ever been there, that is a very, very scary trick to do down a very, very long gap, and the run-up and landing is not great. Um, so, yeah, he's I could name a thousand other tricks that he's done, but I'm not going to because we're going to the next one. Uh, Chaz Ortiz, because he seems cocky. I can confirm that when he was a younger kid, he was definitely cocky, but he is an adult now, so I have no idea. Uh, but when I met him when he was a kid, I was just like, damn, this this motherfucker. Uh, little kids who are good at skating, let me tell you, it just never uh, never really pans out too well. Um, 
very, very few rare exceptions. All the skater kids that I know, even now, a lot of them, they're, they're just little kids and they're good at something and they want that validation. I don't know what to tell you. Um, a lot of them grow out of it. A lot of them do. A lot of the young kids who end up getting good uh, early on, they end up being decent people, sometimes. Uh, all YouTube skaters because they aren't core enough. Thrasher, it's hashtag Thrasher, hashtag skater die, hashtag core. I'm assuming that's satire, uh, and uh, but also I agree. Like, be more core, everybody, come on. Um, Burberry Airy, all ego and image. Seems like there's more modeling than skating. So that kind of goes off the, what I was saying before. I don't know if he has an ego. In fact, I would assume that if he's going all out with like the spike hair and like the whole ensemble, he knows that he's gonna get a lot of shit for it. And I think he just sees like a way to like market that and do well. Cause like I said, my friends who talked to him said he's a really nice kid. Uh, so I don't know, maybe he's just out there hustling, but maybe he is an egocentric piece of shit. I don't know, I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna assume the best. Uh, and say that what my friend said to me is true, but who knows. Um, John Hill, because he's so awkward. I don't even know if John Hill's that awkward. He used to be more awkward before, but I think he's way less awkward now. 